Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Pittsfield. You've been listening to Pittsfield auctioneer Brian Curlis, who was the 2017 World Livestock Auction Champion. Um, now, to people in the auction business, that is an immense deal because there are hundreds, maybe thousands of auctioneers around the country and in Canada and around the rest of the world that do this for a living and it's very competitive. And Brian himself has been involved in this competition for several years and had some success, but then finally in 2017, you broke through with the World Championship. That's, that's a hoot. I, I don't think people around this, this area kind of are aware of that. Well, you know, it's been, uh, it, it, as you can imagine, it was a challenge. And when I started, I had uh, uh, aspirations that all I needed to do was just jump in and I'd probably just win the thing, you know? <laughs> it just seemed like it ought to be Young and easy. cocky, right? Oh yeah. my goodness, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I went in and, and found uh, that the competition was incredible and uh, there are a lot of great auctioneers in the country and uh, it was something that I watched and aspired to for about 20 years before I actually uh, got involved with the contest itself. Um, so I kind of waited till I got some kids raised and got mm -hmm. some things under my belt and decided that, you know, the timing was right to try it. And uh, so it was, uh, but it was a great challenge um, and a very rewarding and very humbling process to go through that, uh, not only through an interview portion of a contest, but also the selling portion and just the, uh, uh, the, the intensity mm -hmm. uh, of the contest uh, was, was an educational yeah. process in itself. This was, like I said, the 2017 championship. This took place in Billings, Montana. Um, as evidence of your victory at that, we have this, this now you have a lot of belt buckles because you've won a lot of competitions, but this is the big one, the LMA, which is Livestock Marketing Association, yes. 2017 World champion and that is a gorgeous thing it's it's, it's much more impressive than your other belt buckles <laughs> well hopefully right but, yeah. and then of course there was a five thousand dollar cash prize that, that went with it and uh and, and some other things i mean uh you got the use of a beautiful pickup truck for a year didn't you sure did what was that like driving that thing around well uh, to be honest with you it was a little out of character for me because i i was um i don't want to say that i was embarrassed by it because i knew it was coming but all these prizes are not what this has ever been about for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, to be honest, I, I don't want to say that I don't care about the prizes, mm -hmm. but they came with it. That's just not what it was always about. Um, you know, I was the 54th world champion. So, you know, in those years previous, I've been watching those champions and, and never, ever in my life thought that I could be uh, even considered in the same conversation with those guys. Until that I put. you came in second. You came in second a few <laughs> years before you won, right? I, so, I did, yeah. yeah. I came in second a uh, couple of years before in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so when, when that starts happening, you know, like I say, when you start, you think, well, you just win it. <laughs> but then there's this big discrepancy about what happens after that, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, it's just a matter of paying attention to the details and see what the guys that have won ahead of you, see what are they doing that I'm not doing, you know, mm -hmm. and just pay attention to the details and adjust. Yeah. And, and so uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great 
really great process. We, we heard a little bit about now, what they call what auctioneers do, chanting. We heard a little bit about your chant, chanting at the beginning of the program. I want to go back now and hear some more of that from the competition itself in 2017, and then we'll come back and talk about it, okay? Sure. Nine and a half, nine fifty eight at the beginning of nine and a half, and now y'all out. Nine fifty eight to go again. Seventy dot ahead at the beginning of seventy dot fifty eight at the beginning of half, and seventy fifty eight at the beginning of one dot ahead at the beginning of one half, dot ahead at the beginning of one half, and now two dot ahead at two dot fifty eight at the beginning of seventy three dot one hundred and seventy three dot anybody hit at the beginning of three, and one hundred and seventy two dot fifty eight at the beginning of three three sold to you one seventy two fifty. Brian. For those of us who don't attend auctions, I have no idea what you were saying. <laughs> I mean, do you ever look out there and people are going, or do they all know, do, are they all hip to it? You know, uh, we, we run into both of those categories, right? So in some auctions, when we're in a livestock auction like that, those buyers are sitting on those seats maybe five, six days a week. They f are thinking way ahead of what's going on in that champ. It's, it's second nature to them. Mm -hmm. When we go back to, uh, we'll see the farm toy uh, auction. Some of those folks are professional buyers. Some of them might go to an auction once a year or maybe, they've, maybe this is the first one. Mm -hmm. So we construct our chant a little bit differently so that whoever our audience is, we want them uh -huh. to understand what's going on. The most important thing I feel in a chant is uh, beyond the knowledge of the product that we're selling is clarity so that our customers can understand what's going on through that process. Now, the chant, did it develop into this real fast cadence because it was a way to sell more product and get more animals through there faster? Is, is that how it got but, all stepped up like that? You know, a, uh, having a sense of urgency to the process is extremely important. Mm -hmm. For okay, sure. so it's not only a matter of uh, economy of time; it's also to get people sort of driven into a rhythm, and they want to get they want to get their they want to get their bid in there. Huh? There is no better place to sell something than to sell it at auction, where we have competitive bidding, mm -hmm. because that competition builds emotion, and and that's what drives the uh, the value. It can, it can it can help us find that true value of mm -hmm. something. Now, in this competition, for instance, in Boise, when you won the, the, the world championship, it's more than just chanting and it's more than showing that you can run an auction. They, the Livestock Management Association actually has a panel of judges that want to hear what your thoughts are on agriculture and selling uh, and, and, and the livestock management business. So you're asked a panel, like Miss America, you're asked a bunch of questions, right? You kind of like that, yeah. yeah. You know, in, in that process, it's an interview, interview portion of the contest where each contestant is asked the same three questions to each contestant and given an opportunity in front of their peers and the cameras and the lights and uh, live online and a lot of pressure um, and uh, to, to articulate their answers to industry-related questions in front of um, industry-related judges. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it adds another dimension to the contest that hasn't always been there. It's a relatively new uh, part to that contest. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly the mission of the Livestock Marketing Association is to support and protect local livestock auction markets. Uh, they understand that auctions are a viable part of the livestock industry today. So the, the, the mission of the Livestock Marketing Association is to, they're such a unique organization in that they are on the front lines helping local livestock auction markets deal with issues that confront them every day. And at the same time, they're hovering at 50,000 feet keeping a trained, focused eye on the major issues that affect the umbrella that is the livestock industry. Brian, you became kind of a celebrity after you won that 2017 World, World uh, Championship. Uh, tell us about Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, um, that, that started by driving down Washington Street in downtown Pittsfield, Illinois one day, and the phone rang, and, you know, as they say, sometimes uh, Hollywood calls. Well... <laughs> On the other end no, of the line, not for me. <laughs> no. uh, on the other end of the line was a lady uh, telling me that she was uh, from Hollywood, you know. And I, the, my initial reaction was to hang up the phone. But the longer she talked, the more it kind of started making sense. So uh, Disney uh, asked me to come do a voiceover for a movie they have coming mm -hmm. up by the name uh, called Wreck It Ralph Two. So went and did that, and it was. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was a real kick to go through that process. So you're doing voiceover work, and they also created a character that looks a little like you, I guess, huh? Is that what well, they I guess, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think so. My daughter thinks so. 
<laughs> Your daughter's going to be in line to see that movie. Right. I guess yeah. all of Pittsfield yeah. will we, be. We've got a lot of people that are uh, anticipating that coming out yeah. sometime around Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to it, too. Um, and, I mean, this this table of hardware, they're big on belt buckles in the auction business. I can I can tell that. They are. Um, yeah. But, I mean, look at this look at this ring over here. Now, this is from your world championship, right? It is. Um, that's, that's the world champion ring. And... Uh, you know, all, like I say, all these things, as you can see, they're all in the boxes. I don't use them much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really what it's all about for me. Yep. Um, so, but gosh, they sure are nice, aren't they? Oh, they're just beautiful. And, <laughs> and you know, I mean, you actually did wear your world championship because during that year, you sort of represent the Livestock Management Association. And it's nice if you can wear that and kind of kind of give them a boot at the same time. Right? Well, you know, and that's something that, that is really important. You know, the Livestock Marketing Association is who puts on this contest, and, and they do it in an effort to promote and support uh, local livestock auction markets. And, that, and that's really important to our local communities. Uh, even our, you know, here in Pittsfield, we closed our market in 2000. Mm -hmm. um, but as I had the opportunity to travel around the country and see those small communities from east to west all over the country where they have a local livestock auction market that is a hotbed mm -hmm. of economic activity at least one day a week. A lot of those markets have, a, have an auction there maybe two, three, four days a week. Um, but it is, uh, it's really important to keeping our local communities solid and having that economic engine going in mm -hmm. a lot of those small communities. Mm -hmm. I want to brag on one more thing on you here. This is so heavy I can barely lift it, but I want to put this out where we can see it. And this is your best of the best Illinois champion of champions. Um, what, it, what does best of best mean? Well, um, in 2013, I was fortunate enough to win the Illinois State Auctioneer Contest that they have at the State Fair each year. Um, the, the following year, in 2014, they put together a conference, and in conjunction with that, they had what they called the best of the best. And mm -hmm. um, being the, the most recent uh, winner, I just entered it just because it was, seemed like the thing to do and, mm -hmm. and, again, just got fortunate. And, uh, you know, all these contests, um, what, what that was was they invited past Illinois state champions. Mm -hmm. And th there, there was... Uh, that competition is Some always heady really competition, tough. Well. Isn't it? I'll tell you yeah. what, yeah. Uh, sure is. Those guys are all really great, and I just was fortunate enough. And I, I, it, with each one of these competitions, it's important to remember that most any contestant can win one of those competitions on any given day. Those mm -hmm. guys are all really good. The stars kind of align uh, when a guy wins one. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you got to kind of have a good day, and and, and everything's got to be yeah. just about right. Uh, to, to come up on, at the top of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you're active in auctioning other things besides livestock, too. And, and in fact, right here in Pittsfield, we're, we're setting up a toy, a, a toy auction, a farm toy auction. And uh, I'd like to visit that and get a, a, a kind of an idea what the organizational aspects of that is. So can we go down there now? You bet. Okay. Brian, here at Pikeland Community School in Pittsfield, this room in a few days it's going to be full of people. This will all be chairs where you and I are standing here, right? And all the farm toys will be spread out right where, right where you're starting to organize them here. And, uh, and, you, and the auctioneer yourself will be standing at the front of the room and then you've got these, you've got these video boards, these monitors here, and everybody will be able to see from their program what's coming up next and, 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 and the order of the, of the bidding. So there's a lot of organization that takes place for this, isn't it? Boy, there is. You know, when we start off and we have 635 lots of these farm toys and to present those to folks that we have presented online ahead of time, they've been able mm -hmm. to see what's coming up. They've got pictures, they've got the description online. But when we get our hands on them here in the auction facility, yeah, it takes a lot of organization, and I couldn't do it without a great crew to help me yeah. set all this up. They've I'll, been a great I'll, asset. I'll bet. Now, and speaking of, you mentioned online. Before you had online capabilities, that's made it a lot easier, hasn't it? Being able to show people beforehand on what, they, what you've got online. It really has. It, it's been a great help. Uh, just, as you say, organizationally, it, it lets people uh, do some research ahead of time. That's a, that's a big asset to let mm -hmm. people come in here 
uh, knowing what they want to bid on before they actually get here. Can we take a walk through some of this merchandise you here? Okay. You, you have several uh, folks who are selling here, but the main fella is a guy from Loami, Illinois, and he's been collecting these farm toys for 30, 40 years, I guess, huh? Sure. And what a collection, my goodness. You, this, his basement was full, right? <laughs> Absolutely full, and, and I don't know how he did it. Uh, so many times we see a collection um, like this that, that might be uh, sitting on somebody's shelves, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they might be all covered with dust, but I'm telling you, I don't know uh, how he did it, but these things have all just been as clean as a pen. Uh, it's, it's been incredible to see how he took care of them. He's, he's not only a collector, but he's also one that obviously paid attention to them and spent time with them, kept them dusted, kept them, you know, and, and kept, many of them have their original boxes, which and is good. And as you can see it? on the floor, we have some uh, empty boxes that we haven't uh, got married well, up to the, to the toys and, and why is that important? Well, obviously, if we can keep the box with the toy, that's going to increase the value to someone uh, because so many boxes were discarded over the years mm -hmm. that when you find one that still has the box or maybe it's never been out of the box, that's even better, uh, then it adds value. And, and we can see here's, here's some in boxes. And then on the floor there, you've got, those are the ones you're still trying to marry up with the toys <laughs> sure. themselves. And sometimes the box is worth more than the toy, I guess. It, can, it? it can very well be, yeah. that's correct. Okay. Yep. Um, now, we're okay, when we're looking at Alice Chalmers right now, let's go over here to some of these larger ones. And I asked you if you would show me some of the ones that might be more appealing to more people and might bring a bigger amount of money. Sure, so we, uh, now, now we get into a pedal car and pedal tractor area. We don't have a lot of them on this auction, um, but when we look at something unusual like the Caterpillar diesel uh, dozer, it is really an interesting piece. Is that a pedal? Is that a pedal? So that's for it, a kid to is. pedal, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a pedal dozer. Uh, so really interesting piece, and, and we kind of think it might be one of the, the higher selling mm -hmm. items on the auction. Mm -hmm. Um, because they were rare or, or because it's just in such good condition or? or Both. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that, that's something that, um, you know, as we say, something that's been mass produced many times ends up with a, a lower value because the, the supply is so great. You know, that's the thing that's fantastic about an auction is it's all about supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So when something has been mass produced, uh, we, uh, we expect that value to be less down the road. When we have a piece like this that we're, there just weren't very many of them, when one's in this good a condition, uh, we can expect the value of that to be pretty high. And you might have people come to this sale just for that item. I mean, exactly. they may, may not be collectors of, of farm toys at all, but they may say this and that might be what they show up for. And if I'm lucky, they come to buy this and I get to sell them two or three of those <laughs> over there too. That's right, get them hooked, huh? <laughs> you know, it's interesting, an auctioneer, probably you find yourself learning all the time about different things because the people that are in that audience, they know that they're here because they're collectors and they know that stuff. And you're expected to know that stuff too, aren't you? Exactly right. You know, and the, my, my learning curve uh, for various things uh, get, gets uh, ramped up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. When we tie into a project, because um, there's nothing that we can't uh, handle, but sometimes we need to reach out to somebody that we know is also interested or maybe is a, an official in something uh, that, that maybe we don't see all the time, you mm -hmm. know? We mm -hmm. see a lot of things pretty regularly around here, but at the same time, every once in a while, we'll run into something that someone brought in from an area a long ways away that we don't mm -hmm. see a lot of. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we need to ask for a little help. Yeah, you need to do a little brushing up, don't you? Sure. And and you never, probably never know. Have you, have you ever been asked to, to sell items that you didn't even know existed and you say okay well let me let me do a little boning up on this and we'll get around to it absolutely you know we run into little pieces uh that say uh, for instance cast iron farm tools quite often and you know maybe finally by auction day we'll run into uh, some old boy that's been collecting those things for a long time and he'll say oh yeah i know what that is but up until then maybe nobody knows what that piece <laughs> actually is so yeah that's that, that happens a lot yeah well, it's got to be interesting, and of course, like you say, you can't do it yourself. You've got staff members who help you. I know we saw them here today trying to trying to fit boxes to toys, and, and of course, all this stuff has to be set out in a way that is presentable because people show up early. They want to walk through here and see what it is they're interested in. Absolutely right, and, and you know, to the point about the, the folks that help me and that work 
with me on this auction. I've got people like Jason Duke, who we met here this morning. Um, you know, I would not do these kind of things without people like him helping me. That they love doing it. Organizing these things like this mm -hmm. is not my forte, but it is his, mm -hmm. and he does a great job at it. So it's a great partnership when uh, people like Jason and, and his crew come in and help me do a lot of this. Just to expand a little bit more on the kinds of things that you get involved in, um, and not just yourself, but other auctioneers as well, um, t what sort of things are you selling later in the year? What sort of sales do you have coming Sure, up? so we've got a gun auction coming up. We'll have a couple of gun auctions a year, and we'll sell from two to 400 guns on these gun auctions. We've got one coming up the end of August, uh, which is always a big deal. You know, we gather in a lot of people to these gun auctions, and over the years, we've been having those for about 15 years now. Over the years, the quality of our gun auction has increased a lot, mm -hmm. so we'll do that. We'll have a farm machinery auction the first weekend in December, a farm machinery consignment auction. Uh, so some things like that, you know, we're continually selling farmland, continually selling houses. I've got a nice house to sell up in Quincy here in a couple of weeks. Uh, I've got another little house and, and uh, some pieces here mm -hmm. in town to sell. So, you know, those things are continually coming, but the livestock uh, auction business is, is awful good here too. So mm -hmm. we do a lot of that selling cattle at livestock markets yeah. around the region. As, and, as and we saw earlier <laughs> in the program, uh, you were recognized as the, the, na the actually the world livestock auctioneer of the year. And uh, so, you, so you, have to, you have to go beyond that though, because probably nobody can make a living doing just livestock, or am I wrong? Well, definitely when you get in other areas of the country where they have a lot more livestock, uh, those guys make a very good living And that's in that what business. they do, huh? They, yeah. don't, they don't branch out the way you do. Exactly, but it's by necessity, it's what they have. Mm -hmm. when, you know, that they can't hardly keep up with everything they have to do in the livestock yeah. industry. Here, we don't have as many livestock as we used to have, certainly not as many as they do. So we diversify, mm -hmm. and you know, as, as we say, our, our goal is to uh, fill the need within the community. Bonnie Sandage, we have been looking at amazement at your husband Bill's collection of farm toys. Mm -hmm. Um, he's holding, I think, he describes this as his favorite. Yeah, um, it is. Tell me a little bit, he hadn't had it that long. Tell no. me a little bit about that. It's beautiful, it's a Massey Harris, isn't it? A Massey right. Harris combine. And I think it needed a lot of work when he, he got it and he did uh, put some new reels on it and mm -hmm. re repainted it, is that right, honey? Yeah. He repainted it and uh, so he, he spent a lot of time uh, replacing parts on on a lot of these uh, implements, and uh, well, it, it's it was like quite Brian a hobby. Said, I mean, not not only were these like taken good care of, but they were very clean. So he mm -hmm. obviously spent time with them. He did. They weren't yeah. just stuck in the basement no. and collecting dust. He spent a lot of time, and of course, right. it's your basement. So your basement was full of these toys <laughs> all these years, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so like I said, the, the man cave is now. It's the mom cave now. Yeah. No, it's empty all those now. What does that feel? Like? Well, it's it's not empty. I can find things to put down there. <laughs> Anything that doesn't fit upstairs goes down. Everybody. But, and you have that. shelving, plenty of shelving, yes, right? Yes, lots of shelving. All of these, and there's 600 toys here were yes. all had their own shelf and their own place yes and I imagine Bill had an order for everything didn't he everything was where it belonged yeah oh yeah and <laughs> it, it's amazing to me that he still he can tell you everything probably what almost what he paid for every item here and I can't do that but uh, well, well he said that he paid in excess of three hundred dollars for this yes. little combine yes. here. Um, and, I, and I asked him, would you expect to get more than that for it? He goes, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but somebody's going to get a real fine because he fixed that up nice, yeah. didn't he? I think if I had to say a favorite, it's the Spirit of 76 tractors. He got two of them. Yeah. Uh, we were in Iowa and he bought one up there and then he bought one, I forgot where the next sale was, but it, it was something we did together. Uh -huh. And it was, it was special because it was the Spirit of 76. And, one was a lighter blue and one was a dark blue. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess if I had a favorite, that's, that would be that, because we were Is together. it hard to give all this up? Not for me, it's harder for him. Yeah. It's harder yeah. for him. But we knew it was something that had to happen. It we were getting to the point that uh, I wanted to do it while he was still able to enjoy and watch it sell and, and uh, you know, it just, uh, he was the one that put it all together. Get it. Yep, it's his. It's his project. Yes, isn't it? it is. 
Well, listen, thank you both. And you'll be here present for the sale. Oh, yes, and, we'll and be here. And you'll be keeping your fingers crossed. Yes. And uh, and hoping that uh, that it all comes out okay. Well, yeah. it's in God's hands. So yeah. whatever it You've is, made the decision, it will be. Right? Okay. That's right. All right. Yeah. Well, you will not be able to see. This program will air before you get a chance to either attend this auction or hear anything about it. But I thought you might find it interesting to know what goes into putting an auction together and also getting to know one of the premier auctioneers in the world. With another Illinois Story in Pittsfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.